This class is all about creativity. It's time for a creativity project to apply what you've learned so far. In the Create Performance task, or 30% of your AP score, you will design and implement a program that might solve a problem, enables innovation, explores personal interests, or expresses creativity. In this video, we're going to go over the Creativity Project Practice 1 for our Lyrics app. Previously, we made the Lyrics app, but now we're actually going to go through the process of making our Lyrics app for the Create Performance task, which is 30% of your AP score on the AP Computer Science Principles exam. If you look at this, here we go, you'll be given 12 hours of class time to complete the following. Final program code, video that displays the running of your program and demonstrates functionality you developed, and written responses to all the prompts and the performance tasks. These are the three things that are required and you will be given 12 hours of class time to complete this task. On this page, you can see I have a final program code template that I've created for you. I have how to actually record your video, which is part two, and I have a written response template that I've also created for you and is fillable. Also on the page, you can see this is the app that we made previously, and we are going to complete these documents above for the AP Computer Science Principles Create Performance Task. Again, here you can see here is breaking it down, final program code, download the code template above, use the snipping tool on Windows or Command Shift 5 on a Mac to get your code. We will do that shortly. Add your code to the template and turn it in. The video again using Screencast-O-Matic to record a video of your app running. We will do that as well. The written response, download the written template and complete above. And you can see I also have the scoring rubric here. The scoring rubric is very important. While you're doing your create performance task, you always want to make sure that you refer to the rubric. This is how all of us teachers, I'm also a AP Computer Science Principles reader, which simply means grader. We use this rubric in order to grade all the student submissions. So you as a student want to make sure when you're doing your create performance task, you open up the rubric and you just simply follow it as a guideline to make sure you get all of the points. So let's go back and let's get all of our documents together. So I'm going to open up this. This is the template that I've created and I'm going to download it. And let's do this first. So final program code. This is the same document. You can see here what I've given you. I've given you just the generic information from the college board, but on I've, I've given you three pages where you can click on this, upload your code in one section. So let's go to our program code. So you can see here is our app. The Lyrics Compression Game. We created this previously as a part of Big Idea 2 data. And we did a data compression where you have song lyrics that were compressed and the user has to guess the song based on words added back in. So let's look at the code. We have to submit all of the code. Well, we have two screens. So I am going to grab my screen one. And again, on a Windows, you can use the snipping tool. On a Mac, Command Shift 5, like this and you can drag around what you want and press capture. Now, I gotta go to my screen too. Now this is a lot bigger. So you can see I, I probably want to zoom out, but you don't wanna zoom out so much that the, the reader can't really see everything. So I'm gonna zoom in to something like this and I'll just grab pieces of this. So that's the top half and this is kind of the bottom half. So I'm going to move some of this down as kind of a second piece or the second page. And again, you can rearrange your stuff. You can see I have comments in my code. It's always a good thing to comment your code, especially for the grader, so they can kind of have some feedback. So let's see if I can get all of this at the top. So I'm gonna put this in one page and I'm going to put this in another page. All right, so let's try to grab this first. Again, use your snipping tool or Command Shift 5. And simply grab that. Now, I want to get all my code, so I might make three. Right, can I get to, let's see, here? 
trying to get all of my code. Okay, that might work. Put this over here. Put this right here. And put this there. So again, it is going to take some maneuvering for you to kind of get all of your stuff into place. So now I have another picture. I'm going to grab this. And there you go. So remember I just downloaded. So now that we got the code, let's actually add it in into the template that we downloaded it. So here is my template. First page just kind of goes over the, the stuff. Second page describes what you need to turn in. Third page, fourth page, and the fifth page is really what I added in. You can see create performance tasks. You have the description of the code. And then here you can actually upload the code. So let's do that. Click on that. Click on browse. And that. And I'm going to click OK. And this was my screen one. So the description, you can put whatever you want. I'm going to do screen one. Home, home screen. Again, that just kind of describes the, the code that I have and they can see screen one right there. So I'm gonna go to this, my second page. And again, just click on this, click on browse and I'm gonna upload my second image. Click okay. And again, this was from my lyrics screen, main game. And I'm just gonna copy that down because I know I, I took two pictures from that. And I'll say part two code. And also I'm gonna click on this, click browse. And there we go. So you can see I have added the code the complete code for everything. Now that we've uploaded the code, let's go through our checklist, which is on page two. Submit one PDF file that contains all the program code, including comments. Include comments of acknowledgements for any parts of the submitted code. So that has been written by someone else. So we have comments in our code, we're good for that. Important, if the program environment allows you to include comments, this is preferred way to acknowledge and give credit to another author. However, if the program does not, ours does. So if you are using a program segment from someone else, make sure that you, you comment that code. In your program, you must include student developed program code that contains the following. And again, I have my check marks here for you. Instructions for input of one of the following. The user, including user actions that trigger events. That's what our app is. The user is going to trigger actions by touching hints or guessing um, the lyrics game that so I'm going to go ahead and click check mark all of these apply let's go down a little bit more use of at least one list or collection to represent a collection of data that is stored and used to manage complexity and help fulfill the program's purpose so you can use a list or data structure here you can see we have songs and video links this is actually a dictionary and it links the song name to the video that will play if the user guesses the correct song. We also have a list here. We also have another variable, songs and lyrics, which is, again, the key is the song name. And this is the lyrics for each of those songs that we compress using data compression. Now, you might say this is not a list. They said a, a collection type. A dictionary is a collection type. So if we go back to our file, we have a collection type and you can see list. A collection type is a type of aggregate elements in a single structure. Some includes lists, databases, and sets. A dictionary is considered a set, so we use that. Again, you can use any one of those. You can see important, the data abstraction must make the program easier to develop. Alternatives would be more complicated or easier to maintain. Future changes in the size of the list would otherwise require significant modifications of the code. So. Again, that's a part of the written response, but I'll leave that up to you. Why is having this dictionary make it easier to code? That's pretty much what you're looking for. 
at least one procedure that contributes to the program's intended purpose, where you have defined the procedure's name, the return type, and one or more parameter. So you can see we need a input. So this is really the reason we're going to change our code to fit the create task. Our code already works, but we're gonna change it slightly. So to have at least one procedure that can choose where you have to find the procedure's name, return type of necessary rate, and one or more parameters. So we have that part. Well, an algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration in the best of these procedures. So this, we wanna pass this information and you should have some different inputs based on a condition. We don't have a condition there. So this doesn't really work. Call to your procedures, we do have that. Instructions for output. Audio, visual, we do have that. When we do stuff in our app, it will give us an output, so we have that. So we don't have this. We need an algorithm that takes input and has a condition in it that we can test. And it's also central to our game. So we actually could use this, hint word, number value. So we actually have this, decompress lyrics by words. It's looking for sequencing. Sequencing, selection, and iteration. So iteration, we're looping. Do we have selection? We don't have selection, so we can't actually use this one either. That's why we're going to change our code slightly. So check answer, it has this condition. We're checking if the song name, which we know is saved, is equal to the text box. We can do a quick modification and we could use this to check off this call. So actually let's just add in an input. And I'm gonna call it user guess. Now, I'm gonna move the text box song. I'm just gonna put user guess in here. So now, I am gonna go wherever I'm calling, check song. You can see button guess song. I need to give it that input. And that input is going to be this. All right, so now, since I changed my code, obviously I need to go back and grab the screenshots of these. So again, that's why you should make sure your code is complete before you do it. So I got this, and again, I wanna move it so I can get everything in here. So I'm gonna take a screenshot again. And I know I need to take a screenshot of this because I changed it, remember? I added input. I'm just gonna move it around some more. Oh lordy. Put this down here. So I've copied my code again. And did I change one? No, but I did change this. So I simply have to click on it and then I can just re-upload that code. So I'll go back to the bottom. That was that. And you can see this one now has that input procedure that we're gonna use. Come down here, click on this. And come down here and update that. So there you go. This is how you complete the final complete code document that you will need to upload using my template. Now, we need to look at our digital portfolio. You can see here, program code, you will scroll to your name, click on view details, and actually upload your document here. So first let's actually save this. I'm just gonna save as. I'll save it in the same location and I can save that. So now that I have my document, again, I can close that. Simply come to your digital portfolio page. 
you, I'm a teacher, but you will have a upload button here. You can upload your code. This has been the video on how to complete your program code for the AP Computer Science Principles Create Performance Task. In the next video, we'll go over how to actually upload your video for the Create Performance Task.